Welcome to Dear Younger Me, a 10-part interview video series where we feature some of our very own Bad Tech alumni students who are currently working in various professional fields. We hope that these videos will give you a glimpse of the possibilities after you graduate for you to set bigger and bolder goals. Enjoy! Hi everyone, I'm Koei and this is Adele. And today we have Vanice with us who graduated in 2019 with a Bad Tech Diploma from TP and she is now a junior keeper in Singapore Zoo. So Bernice, thank you for being here with us today. And could you please share more about yourself and your job scope? Yes, so thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Bernice and I'm currently st uh, not studying, working <laughs> at the Singapore Zoo. Uh, I've been working for around one year plus plus and a few months. And uh, yeah, my, I'm a junior keeper and I take care of the carnivores and some small mammals in the zoo. I graduated in, in 2019, and, and after that, I just applied for the job because uh, I've, at first, I went to poly thinking that, oh, I should uh, get a bad degree. Mm. But uh, as I went through my three years, I realized that I'm really into wildlife, wildlife and um, not so medical stuff. So I thought I would pursue something, something zoology related. And I thought why not kickstart it by working at the zoo, which is something that I relate to and I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So straight away, right after I graduate, I went to apply at the zoo. Also, do you plan to like continue to get like a degree in zoology? Yeah, um, I actually really want to get a degree in zoology, but mm. right now I, I am pretty comfortable um, where I am working at the zoo and I feel like um, there is no need to rush for a degree right now. Mm. So I would stay in Wildlife Reserve Singapore for a few more years before I venture out to further study. So your job as a zookeeper is very interesting because it's different from working in a clinic with like small animals, right? So yes. how is it like being around the wild animals every single day? Okay, so because I work with um, carnivores and small mammals, mostly big cats, they are quite interesting because they really show a different side of them every day. And example, my leopard. I have this uh, female leopard that is super manja. So... Basically, she really likes to interact with humans, but after she got a new mate, she's not interested in us anymore. She prefers uh, <laughs> her new partner, so I think that's quite interesting. And we also have a new son there, which we recently conditioned her to the exhibit. And previously, when we first started, she was really shy, very scared of humans. And now she's very, very comfortable. She don't even care about humans and more, she just wants her food that we leave inside the exhibit. So that is really interesting because slowly you get to see a different side of them and you can also see how they interact with their other animals. Mm. Yeah, so other than the wild animals, like, like in captivity, we also have the really, really wild ones that are found over at the area. So a lot of times we do have wild snakes that is not under WRS around the area. Yeah, which is quite interesting because we don't really see wild animals like out in the streets. And mm. we also do see kolugos as well, uh, which are flying lemurs. And the kolugos in the zoo, they are very um, used to humans being around them. So sometimes you are, if you're lucky enough, you get to see them just hanging out at, on the tree butts. So that's quite cool also. And you get to see different animals every day. You don't know who you'll see like tomorrow. So, would you say that your job is dangerous, seeing that you're around big cats every day? Uh, yeah, I feel like as a keeper, any keepers actually, you do like, you do have to be careful, especially when you're around animals, um, because you don't know when they'll actually show their true self. Mm. So, for my section, we always have to be uh, in a body system. So when we work with carnivores, especially, we have to be, there have to be two people at the same time when we are working with carnivores for safety purposes. Mm. But of course, other than that, we must also 
um, be mindful of our safety. La. So if you're entering any uh, dangerous animal facility, we will always check, like head count the animals, make sure everything is locked before we go inside to another uh, empty enclosure or den. Yeah. Mm. So I guess if you actually, if you know what you are doing, um, if you know the SOPs involved, it is not as dangerous. Yeah, but it's it's still quite fun working with carnivores. I don't I don't like think of it as dangerous because uh, my colleagues also know their job very well. So it's quite a safe environment working there. You actually go inside and play with them. <laughs> like, can you play with them? <laughs> we can't play with them, Sally. Like, this is one of the sad part of working as a carnivore keeper. But we usually just touch them through the mesh. Yeah, they still enjoy being like mm. rubbed through the my, the mesh, but we can't go in with them because mm. they are definitely stronger than us. They can like one push, right? That's it. Uh. Yeah. How did like PP actually help prepare you for the zookeeper job? Oh, okay. So in Thomasic Poly, I've learned a lot of husbandry. Mm. And also the theory itself actually helped me to understand more about the animal's behavior. Especially the uh the part where we learn about uh geriatric animals or gestation, lactation or this, right? It's very useful whenever uh you have uh an animal that is pregnant. So that's when you can apply your knowledge. Like you can know oh, when is it actually pregnant? Is it on her gestation period? So you like basically I will look out for the weight and like see if the mammary glands are bigger, you know? Yeah, it kind of helped. Like, you will know, like, oh, you actually, actually you have learned this and you can actually apply it to real life. And sometimes, um, we need to do animal monitoring every day to see if the animals are healthy, any wounds, because you don't know what will happen overnight. So every morning, we have to do that before we release them into the enclosure. So that's when the TP knowledge comes in as well. We need We can check for their movements or any wounds basically um, and also we also learn how to clean the enclosure so in in poly we also learn how to handle animals when we are doing husbandry right so we, I also applied that and also feeding you must check if they are if they are feeding well um, Drinking water, how's your appetite, that mm. kind of stuff. So this is very important when you are working with animals because we are the closest ones to them. No one will be able to see it. So um, the keepers really have to observe for all these small things in the animals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, do you have any advice for like freshly graduated vet students who want to pursue a degree as like a zookeeper? Or like, what can they do to better like prepare themselves for this? Hmm, as a zookeeper, ah, I think basically you need to know what you are passionate about, because as a zookeeper, right, you have you can you can work with different animals. Mm. So we have some herbivore keepers, we have invertebrate keepers, uh, we also have vet keepers as well. So. Every keeper will do different, will work with different animals, do different things. So if you if you know that, oh, you really like the carnivores and small mammals, the marsupials, then you can apply for this keeper. Mm-hmm. And if you prefer like hoof stocks, um, you prefer snakes, reptiles, then you can go with that. Uh, if you are interested, if you are still interested to work with uh, animals that uh, that involves uh, medical stuff, right? You can be a vet keeper, so basically you will take care of the water animals, which mm. I think is quite interesting as well, mm. because some of the water animals they do require um, medical assistance. So we have like the vet keepers also have to perform IV drips, mm. give medication, all this, which I think is more closely related to vet tech. Mm. Yeah. Maybe you can share more about your experience when you applied for the job. Okay, so 
Um, when I applied the job, I really like. I thought like, okay, this is like my everything because like I really don't know what else to venture into. I was I was like quite interested in research animals, like animal research studies, because like when I was interning, I interned at a animal research facility, so I was quite interested in that also. But like. Thinking about it, cause after graduation, I had a month or two to think about what I want to do. Then I thought, like, okay, since I've already been in a research facility, why not try something new?、Mm. So I applied for the zoo job,、mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. So I just waited and waited, cause I really don't know what to do next. So um, the first time I sent my resume, right. I waited for two weeks, but then they didn't get back to me. So I just keep sending and sending until like one day, the HR actually uh called me and said, uh come down for interview. Then like I then happy. So like I okay okay thank you thank you thank you. Then I really like prepare everything. So during then, I know that I got, I was given the role as a junior keeper. In carnivores, small mammals, and marsupials. So, I research a lot about that. I research a lot about the zoo itself, WRS itself, and I just went for the interview.、And、then after that, one week later, they got back to me. I got the job. So I'm very happy with. I'm happy. With, I'm very happy with where I am now.、Mm. Yes. And yeah, it's. Like when when during the interview when they told me what my job scope was,、mm. I expected it to be like that, and yeah, it's actually even better. I actually got to do even more things、mm. other than my job scope. Yeah, so I think you can trust them, and they will trust you, and they'll let you do more things. Yes. Like, uh, what are some future job opportunities like for the people? Okay. Um. To people, it might be a stagnant job because I guess you just keep growing as a keeper.、Mm. But there's actually more to just normal keeper duties because a lot of the keepers they will actually produce research papers. So for for animals that they find have interesting behaviors or、um, feeding habits, all these the keepers will try to produce papers. And this can be helpful to learn more about animals in captivity. So, the job is not just very husbandry based.、Um, mm. Keepers can also get to become like animal care officers. So basically, they'll have more commitments, but you also learn a lot at the same time. And yeah, so it's not just keepers. And if you Don't want to continue being in like one taxa taxonomy such as carnivores. You can actually request to switch up and get to、uh, work with more animals, different animals as well. Yeah, a lot of people have actually um a lot of different misconceptions about the job being a zookeeper, right? So what, what so what what are some of the misconceptions that you have heard so far? And can you like say if they are true or not? Okay, misconception. Uh, a lot of times I hear like, uh, visitors saying, "Oh, don't you better study hard. Don't become a keeper. Uh, don't become a zookeeper. You just, uh, you'll just be collecting animal feces every day. That kind of stuff. Like, oh, better study hard. This one like same as cleaner. That kind of stuff. And it's just a. I feel like it's just a very big um. Misconception because they don't understand that keepers, all keepers I've met, they really have passion for animals. It's just something that、um, other people don't understand because usually people don't work with animals as much. But to me, it is a very rewarding job because I get to、um, see my animals every day and I get to do things. To make them happy, which is what、um, the whole purpose、uh, is to work at the zoo. So, 
it's a misconception because they don't understand why uh, I'm doing uh, animal related stuff, I guess. Because um, for me, the whole purpose of my job is to care for the animal's well being. So that includes enrichment, a lot of enrichment, food, that kind of stuff. So mm. basically, they just don't understand that uh, I'm doing this for the animals, but it's okay because I get people do have different interests in life. So yeah. Mm. So like, what sort of qualities do you think it will take to be a good zookeeper? Um, qualities, I guess you really need to be responsible. Mm. Um. If you know that um, the animal is sick, the animal uh, is pacing in the exhibit or at the in their dance, you need to really um, come up with enrichments. Or if they are sick, you really need to take care of them very well. Um, you can't be lazy, I guess, because um, the animals really depend on you. No one else is taking care of them. And qualities. You must also be observant. Like, uh, make sure the animal is not in danger. Before you release them to the exhibit, you've got to check if the exhibit is okay for the animals to be released. And during animal monitoring, you must also check if they have any wounds. Because there are some wounds that um, the keepers might miss and it will cause a bigger issue lah. Mm. so keepers will always try to be observant yeah and I guess a, a big part is passion because that's what drives you to be a good keeper yeah so if you have passion for animals you'll definitely be a great keeper mm. what are some of the challenges that you have faced at work Okay, so basically, challenges I face would be language barrier. Mm. Yeah, because a lot of visitors, they come from foreign countries. So, like, sometimes they think a leopard is a cheetah. Then, I don't know how to explain because, like, I cannot explain in English. So, I need to, like, cheetah like that. Because Jita got one line running down. Mm. Then Leopard to have. So these are some small things that I face. But usually if they understand like Mandarin, I'll just, oh, Lie Pao. Mm. And Pao. Yeah, that kind of stuff. What's your favourite thing about being a zookeeper? Mm. I would say my favourite thing about being a keeper is to look at how they are growing. Mm especially from young. Um, from the time that I started till now, there isn't any major births, mm. like such as from the, the big cats. But we do have, uh, I do take care of naked, naked mole rats. And when, when you see the babies grow up, it's really heartwarming. Because like, they, like from so tiny, think they can grow up to this big, and you see all of them, all the soldiers working hard to take care of the babies. It's heartwarming uh, to mm. watch their growth. And what else? My favorite part of the day is like lunch time after lunch, because that's when you can actually have some free time to mm. actually uh, mingle with your animals. So it's usually during um, afternoon where I me and my colleagues will go around and interact with our animals. So like we, we give them enrichment, we throw them some token meat. Yeah. But now cause got COVID, right? Then we can't um, go on our token feeding, mm. but usually we will still put up enrichment for them. Yeah, so that's when, when the animals come to you, Mm. Yeah, I feel like that's the most rewarding part of the job. Like when they recognize you, you know. Mm. So, um, 
I'm curious. Oh, who is your favorite animal that you've taken care of so far? Is like a name or something? My favorite animal, ah. I got too many, ah. Yeah. Every everyone everyone is so cute, but I don't know. Maybe the cheetahs. So <laughs> tiger also very cute. The leopard also very cute. Yeah, but um, cheetah. I think cheetah or leopard. Very hard to say, but because cheetahs, they we have a male cheetah. Very big, the biggest male cheetah. Then he he's very vocal. He's our most vocal cheetah, and he got a very stupid face. So it's super cute, and like they don't roar, right? So they always meow meow. Damn cute. So I really really love him, and like although the leopard don't really um care about uh the her keepers anymore, but she's still very cute. Yeah. So I can't choose. I don't have a favorite. I like all. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> yeah, very diplomatic answer. Correct. Do you have any advice for your younger self if you were to redo poly all over again? Advice. Hmm. I guess. Uh, pay more attention to lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cause like in poly, I was quite playful, so, uh, I kind of drifted from studies in year two, so I thought like, um, if I could go back, I will try to be more focused, mm. um, and also interact more with the animals, cause, you know, in poly, uh, we get, we get to go on attachments and intern. So, learn more about the animals. Maybe you can pick up even more skills. Because for me, I guess I wasn't that brave enough to ask people if I can do this or do that. Mm. So, I guess through, through that period, I didn't learn as much. So, just don't be shy to ask people if you can do more. Uh hands-on activities. Yes. Okay, so th- that's it for today. So thank you, Bernice, for joining us. Thank you for watching this episode of Dear Younger Me. We hope you have learned more about the zookeeper profession. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button and stay tuned for our next episode, where we will share with you more about other professions.